is Jonathan Lau with the last presentation for Art Appreciation. Shout out Professor H. Uh, this is Romanticism and Romantic Art. <laughs> Very interesting period. Got to give you a brief overview. I know this slide is super boring, but it's important information that I couldn't squeeze in anywhere else. So this was a movement uh, of not just art, but also philosophy and intellectualism and politics that centered on emotion, subjectivity, and individualism, most prominent in Western Europe. Now that we're through that, uh, Romanticism was a counter to Enlightenment ideals of objectivism, empiric evidence, empiric thought, uh, you know, emotion and imagination opposed to order and reason, which I think opposed might be kind of a strong word, but a focus on emotion and individual expression over, like I said before, order and reason, at least in art and philosophy. <laughs> this was most often embodied by depictions of a wild and unpredictable natural world. Uh, you know, exaggerated nature, I suppose. Exaggerated emotion. You wanted... Romantic artists wanted their viewers to feel strongly and they did this with a lot of oddly enough shipwrecks it was a very common motif back in the day uh landscape art uh portraits scenes of events that were not meant to be entirely accurate but were meant to capture the emotion and expression of what was going on at the time so these two pieces kind of exemplify the landscape art side of this. Wander a bit above the sea of fog by Caspar David Friedrich. I'll talk about him in a few minutes. And Salisbury Cathedral from the Bishop's Grounds, John Constable. Now Wander is like poster boy romanticism. The landscape, the everything about this, the use of color the framing of the subject. It's meant to make the viewer feel awe and wonder. And the viewer is supposed to view these things, or uh, feel these things, sorry, very strongly. And on the right is supposed to be an overly serene, picturesque Salisbury Cathedral. Not much to say here. Both of them exaggerated nature, right? Wanderer has kind it has kind of an impossible landscape at least for the the uh eurocentric vision of a lot of these Salisbury Cathedral trees seem a little tall but that could just be the framing of the image uh you know perfect blue skies in England not real. I don't believe that. Moving on. Perfect example artist, as I said before, Caspar David Friedrich. He was a German guy, breaking the kind of... Well, Germany was in Western Europe. He did a lot of landscape art like Wanderer, and you'll see in a second, Rocky Landscape in the Elbe Sandstone Mountains. Very nice piece. Francisco Goya, on the other hand, focuses a lot on the emotional depictions of things making the uh, viewer of the artwork feel and in his piece uh his second most famous piece the 3rd of may 1808 it's an oil painting depicting a massacre of surrendering civilians by uh, a group of armed soldiers goya wants you to feel fear he wants you to feel pity he wants you to be upset. And even though this is not how... This is probably not how this particular event 
went down as far as specific location and everything like that, it probably wasn't accurate. But the emotion that Goya captures is what is accurate. Now here on the left we have said uh, Elbit Mountains and Goya's most famous piece, Saturn Devouring His Son. So the left is kind of abstract. Well, I, oh, I hesitate to use abstract, but you know what I mean. It's kind of surreal, this landscape. Again, meant to inspire awe, meant to inspire wonder, meant to make the viewer love nature and love the natural world. Saturn devouring the sun. Again, Goya with the fear, Goya with the disgust, Goya with the negative emotions. This guy is kind of a bummer. But I do not blame him at all for tackling this side of human experience and human emotion. Because while everyone else was doing landscapes, doing portraits, doing all the pretty stuff, making the viewer feel good, Goya was making the viewer disturbed. People didn't like Goya. People didn't want to ha hang that scary painting up in their house. No, they wanted the Elba Mountains. And while Goya was not successful during his lifetime, I would say at least his story is more famous than Friedrich. You know, no, no, a lot of people don't really know Friedrich aside from Wander, Wanderer in a Sea of Fog. Everybody knows Goya was insane. But anyway, romanticism in the contemporary world now, I know this isn't strictly within the time period, but a lot of romantic uh, composition and subject matter, as well as theming, has survived into the modern day. So, the direct style, the direct natural appeal, is found a lot in Western art which I usually don't care for, and landscape art and landscape photography. All of those things, even though landscape photography is objective because it's a photo, it is still meant to inspire emotion. Western art, again, like I said, not really a huge fan. Mark Maggiore... This guy is fantastic. French-American artist. Moved to Texas. Decided he was in love with cowboys and painted cowboys. And indigenous Americans. And... And... Again, landscape art. But exaggerated. These landscapes are... These landscapes and peoples are the romantic ideal of the West set forward in, you know, Western movies and just the, the cultural zeitgeist of what the Wild West was. So, take this picture, for example. This is Purple Haze, painted, on, uh, painted oil on canvas in 2019. That's the Grand Canyon. And this is... John Wayne Cowboys with a beautiful purple sky. This guy's cloud work is absolutely insane. I know clouds like this do exist, but to have them framed as such is, you know, and with the colors of the, of the wildflowers and the rocks and the sky, you know, everything is meant to inspire emotion. It's meant to, to make the viewer feel, which is exactly what romanticism is all about. And bringing it a little bit into the political side, a lot of this stuff is pretty individualistic. The Wild West in popular culture was a time 
for... Hey, buddy. What you doing? Time for... Being your own man, woman, going and doing whatever your heart desired in a land where everybody else was also doing what their heart desired. Taking what you wanted, when you wanted it. You know, that kind of thing. Killing people in the streets with duels. Digging for gold. Manifesting your own destiny. That kind of thing. And modern and postmodern art still kind of uses romantic theming. You know, that guy with the stupid uh, toilet sculpture. That is individualistic. That is meant to make the viewer feel something. You're supposed to be angry at that. You're supposed to recognize that that artist is doing his own thing, and the point of that piece is to say, hey, nobody's going to stop me. But yeah, that's about it. I like romantic art. Check out this guy. He's pretty cool. I like that guy.